行くぞ我が魔力よ日焼け強めよいや魔力がどんどん集まってきたぞここに見せし闇より見出し輝きを待つよ<笑> Without doubt, this was the best episode of Aristocrats Otherworldly Adventure yet. I, this episode, okay, I was dying from laughter. Like, scene after scene after scene, I was just belly laughing and belly aching from laughter. There's a moment where Kane gets、uh, challenged by some of the, the, the noble kids. Uh, and they want to show off their magic because they have the blessing of the gods. And they're like, boom, bam, magic. They're just thrusting their freaking, like, their groin area. They're just like, ugh, magic. <laughs> and then they go, pew, pew. <laughs> It was just like I was dying scene after scene. And then this man, this dude, Kane, goes and he talks to Silk. And he was like, you know, Um, you, look, you look so beautiful you know, in, you know, in front of me. I've never seen such a, 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 you know, a, be a beauty in front of me. And he's just like, he's just gassing her up. And all of this while he's doing it, he forgets the Duke, which is her dad's right there. And he's just like, his eye is twitching, like, well, yo, how dare you, dude? And, he, and even, even Kate's like, oops, e e sorry. And his dad's like, yo, what is up with you? He's like, yo, my sister, you know, like, she, that's how she likes to be talked to. So I'm just talking to her like that. And then this man has the balls to go in front of the king. And when he talks to、uh, Tes Tesla, <laughs> Tesla,、uh, Tesseract,、uh, what's her name? Tesseri, Tes. Tessery, I don't know, whatever the, the princess's name is.、Uh, he goes in front of her and he hits her with, You look so beautiful today. I thought a goddess appeared in front of me. In that moment, I forgot to breathe. And I was like, My guy, my dude. And he did this in front of the king. The, 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 king's, the king's eyes started twitching. He was like, he, he talked to Kate's father, What kind of philanderer did you bring in front of me? He's like, Look what she did to my daughter. Look what he did to her. And she's like, <laughs> Oh my God. I was just dying. Like, this episode was just absolutely incredibly funny. Oh, her name was Tellus. Tellus. Tellus Dea or whatever. But this episode was just like, I was like, I was crying. My, my belly hurt from laughing. Like, I was like, oh, I got a cramp. But dude was just like going off. Then at the end of the episode, he hits him with the date. So, first, Silk asked for a date. You know, to keep her mouth shut. Then, you know, when t e l l u s comes outside, he puts her mouth, he puts his hand in front of her mouth. He's like, no, you know. And she was like, you touch an unmarried maiden? <laughs> He's like, oh shit.、Uh, and then after that, you know,、uh, t e l l u s gets him to commit to a date too. He's like, oh, I will take you. I will, you know, you look so cute today. Of course, I'll take you out on a date. And he did this right in front of the, the king's right behind him. He's like, I'll take you out on a date. His eyes closed. And the king's right behind him. And the king's like, hey. <laughs> oh my God.、Uh, oh my God. And both the duke and the king like threatened him after, too. Like, you know, you better watch out, bro, with my, with my baby girl. Oh God. Like this episode, I'm telling you guys, it was just so freaking funny. It was just so funny. And I was just dying from all these scenes. Like, especially with the kids with the mmm, mmm, magic. Oh my God, that had me just rolling.、Uh, the rest of the episode, though, so the episode starts off with I, I like how Kane、uh, is able to just basically go in. It reminds me of,、um, damn, what is that? What is, what is that, that、uh, slime anime that, that was out、um, recently this season? It's like a slice of life one. Uh, but it really, really reminded me of that. I'll find it in、uh, Two Shakes of a Lamb's Tale here because I know it was recently. I think, it, I think it finished getting dubbed. And I was watching it last season. It's one of my favorite.、Uh, well, the, season one was one of my favorite anime as well, too.、Uh, let's see. Let's see. Let's see. Let's see. And I, I want to get this right. And I know I'm taking up、uh, your precious time trying to figure this out. But it really reminded me of,、uh, of one of the other animes. Uh, which is by the grace, there it is, by the grace of the gods. So, the reason it reminded me of that is pretty much Kane 
in this anime can basically talk to the gods at any time. So he goes to the church, he does his prayer, and they basically take him into their realm, essentially. And he can pretty much talk to the gods at any time. Uh, he does that in this episode, and they asked him to bring entertainment to the world, so that way they can have entertainment in their realm as well. Apparently, they just simply get bored a lot, which is partially why they're messing with Kane so much. Uh, the one kind of, you know, kink that I have there, or the one kind of criticism that I have there, is these are the same gods, you know, well, the main god, at least. These are the gods that reincarnated Kane from Japan uh, to here, right? So my big kind of like yo that doesn't really make sense to me is you would assume they would have access to the other worlds multiple universes multiple worlds especially japan or our world or whatever you would assume that they would have access to modern conveniences as well so it's like he created for this world he created a reversi board which is kind of like uh like it's kind of like a connect four type game it's pretty much like you you know you reverse colors and you beat your opponent in that way by whoever has like the most of the board filled uh, with their color white or black or brown or, or gray, whatever the colors end up being. I've never personally played the game before. I have, I've seen it, I've heard of it, you know, but I've never played it myself. But he ends up creating that, and he does that to provide entertainment for the gods and then to make himself a little money in this world and, you know, to present it with the king to something cool. But one of the, the critiques I had, though, was like, uh, how do they not have access to modern conveniences of Japan or wherever they're able to reincarnate somebody from? That just didn't quite make sense to me. It's kind of like they're stuck in this world's realm. And it's like if this world doesn't have it, neither do they, which seems weird because then how could you pull somebody from an alternate, you know, world or alternate, you know, timeline or alternate universe, you know, into this world? It just doesn't really add up to me, but I'm going to let that one go. But I do like how he did, uh, you know, start off with a simple game that's wood based, you know, it's wood pieces. He can, you know, make it really easy. It's easy. The the game's, you know, rules are easy to understand. Anybody can really do it. Uh, and it's just another form of entertainment to provide in this world. Uh, then after that, he's almost late to his debut. And then we get into everything that I already covered, which is uh, debuting himself in front of the king and stuff like that. You know, making it known that he's a baron. Uh, flirting with Silk, flirting with Telus, you know, signing himself up for a couple of dates. And then we get a preview for next episode where it looks like he's finally being given his mansion his appropriate mansion, so there's probably going to be some interesting things that come along with that as he finally gets his mansion and everything, uh, and now he has established income with this board, uh, this board that he has, and he now has a partnership with one of the uh, corporations that's kind of like producing items in this world too, and they'll probably end up being bigger with some of his ideas that he's able to bring forth, some of his simplistic uh, ideas that he's able to implement. He could probably grow that business too and make you know a portion of, of that money to kind of like really establish him. And then he has money that will come in from adventures, money that will come in uh, naturally because now he's on the king's salary. So he's going to have the king's salary, you know, money from all of his, all of his inventions and in partnership with this uh, manufacturing company. And then he's also an adventurer. So any adventures that he takes on, he'll be able to get bounties and stuff like that from the guild. So he now has different sources of income. And then obviously, you know, he's going to be engaged to the Duke's daughter and and the the king's daughter so he obviously you know once he once that becomes official you know he's gonna have some kind of income source from just simply be married to the two most noblistic noble girls in in the country so he's basically set for life at this point now he can just kind of do whatever he wants uh get stronger and go on adventures and uh as the gods say they're giving him all this power to save the world because there's gonna be some kind of calamity or something that we're going to get at some point. The one thing that excites me about Aristocrat is if you look at the, I think it's the, is it the OP or the ED? It shows him older. So I think before the season, we'll probably get him in his teens or something. We'll probably get him in his teens, maybe early 20s or something before the season ends. So I think that's going to be cool to see him kind of go through the next progression. The next time skip will probably be 12 or 15 years old. I'm assuming 12 because that's when he starts school, so... Regardless, I'm looking forward to it all. Let me know what you think about this episode down in the comments below. Thank you for joining me. Have a great weekend. Peace.